thank you, Chris and Martin, to invite me today to make this first presentation. Uh, first of all, I have to excuse me to apologize because I have not sent my abstract in due time. And uh, before to give you this lecture, I have to say that I'm not a specialist of the antibiotic. So today I will try to do my best to give you a general overview on this subject. Uh, we know Uh, antibiotics mean anti, again, life, and it was a French bacteriologist, Villemin, we give this name. And everybody know that it was Alexander Fleming, we observed for the first time the production of penicillin by fungus, and this uh, uh, penicillin was able to have properties of antibiosis. The first sulfonamide was produced by people from Bayer company and was Prontosil. And we keep the definition of Wassmann that an antibiotic is a substance produced by a microorganism that is antagonist to the growth of all the microorganisms at high dilution. The streptomycin, the first antibiotics active again tuberculosis which they discovered in 44 and after we have the quinolone story. The good thing is that antibiotics have increased life more than 10 other uh, product uh, life expectancy of 10 years. No other drugs have increased the expectancy, expectancy of life than antibiotics. In the first part of my presentation, I propose to show you different groups of antibiotics used in veterinary medicine, and the old one is the penicillin. The characteristic of penicillin sorry, is you have three parts. You have a thiazole group, a beta-lactam ring, A, very important because the resistance of uh, penicillin is uh, most of the time, again, this part of the molecule, and you have a side chain. This side chain is different, and we have for the, the penicillin G, called also basil penicillin, so we have a basil group here, and you have all the other group M and A, with compound like oxacycline, cloxacycline, meticillin, and ampicillin. Uh, the objective to produce other penicillin was to protect this beta-lactam group and to increase the spectrum of activity. Uh, penicillin act uh, by interfering on the synthesis of bacterial cell wall and it's by the mean of binding to PBP, it's penicillin binding protein. And it's mainly active, again, gram-positive and pastoralosis, but the spectrum is largest for the other group. The resistance to penicillin is act by hydrolysis of the beta-lactam group by the mean of beta-lactamase enzyme. And there is a nice solution with uh, the clavulanic acid, and the clavulanic acid has a high affinity for beta-lactamase enzyme, so uh, the penicillin is still active. And you also have other uh, way of resistance, uh, for example, action on the binding uh, side. Cephalosporin have also this, sorry, the beta-lactam group and the tiazol, but you have two different side chain, R1, R2, and we classify the cephalosporin by the chronology of appearance. The first generation compound like cephalexin, second cephalexin, ceftiofur, cefkinone. Ceftiofur is very often used in animal, uh, in different kind of animals. Uh, the mechanism of action is the same as for penicillin, but the spectrum of activity is broad. And the mechanism of uh, resistance is also production of beta-lactamase and alteration of the target 
uh, penicillin binding protein, and there is also possibility of uh, inability of the drug to reach the binding uh, site. You know that the uh, barrier for the gram-negative bacteria are more complex, and so it's more difficult to go inside the bacteria. Aminoglucosite is another group of compounds very often used also in veterinary medicine. Uh, you have an aminocyclol ring, it's uh, here for streptomycin. Uh, it's called streptidin, and you have two sugar. And in case of the other uh, aminoglucosite, like neomycin and gentamicin, the aminocyclo ring is a desoxystreptamine. It's quite complicated, complex molecule. Uh, the mode of action is totally different. In this case, you have a binding with the, one of the subunits of the ribosome. And ribosomes are necessary to, uh, for the synthesis of a protein. And you have, in this case, an incorrect reading of the genetic code. So the mode of action is totally different of the compound of the penicillin group. Uh, it's mainly active against enteric organisms. So the aminoglycosides are used for uh, some coli, some enteric disease. Uh, the resistance is uh, due to modification of the enzyme and it's carried by the plasmid or transposon in the cell. And in this case, you have a poor, poor binding of the, uh, to the ribosome and also some alteration of uh, mitochondrial of the ribosome. Sorry. Tetracycline is uh, a group of compounds very, very often used uh, in uh, pigs and poultry, uh, you have a four ring here with a lot of radical on different places, but in all cases, you have all the time this four ring. And we have different kind of tetracycline with short acting, like oreomycin, it's chlortetracycline, intermediate acting, the teramycin, and doxycycline is a more long-acting compound. Uh, tetracycline are not bactericid drugs, but bacteriostatic drugs, and they act also on the ribosome. In this case, you also have alteration of this part of this subunit of ribosome and production of uh, a problem to production of uh, uh, MRA of the ribosome. It's a broad spectrum antibiotics, and it's used, again, a lot of different bacterial agents like chlamydia, mycoplasm, but also brucellosis. And the resistance is appeared by decreasing of the influx transport system or, or to the possibility to, for the cell to increase the availability to export the antibiotics. So it's the double mechanism. Macrolide, it's a more complicated molecule with a an aminocyclol macrolic cycle here with two sugar in the case of erythromycin. There is a lot of compound in this group and very also used for uh, gram negative disease and gram positive also, but also for the enteric disease. Uh, it's a bacteriostatic and it acts also on another subunit of the ribosome. Uh, the resistance is uh, appeared by alteration of the ribosomal target and impermeability of bacterial cell wall, so the antibiotic is not able to go inside of the bacteria. Sulfonamide. Uh, for the sulfonamide, you have all the time this group, and it's a very, very large group. Uh, and it's well known association is with another antibiotics with trimetoprim, and in human medicine is called Bactrim. But in all cases, that's the first molecule of sulfonamide, but you find for all the different compounds this, uh, 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 this uh, molecule. Uh, 
sulfonamide are bacteriostatic agents and they act by blocking the synthesis of uh, folic acid and the folic acid is needed for the synthesis of acid nucleic, nucleic acid. It's a very large uh, spectrum of activity, gram-negative, gram-positive, but also for coccidiosis. For coccidiosis, it was one of the first uh, antibiotic used to treat the chicken. And the resistance is now very, very important due to a large use in the unit of uh, uh, poultry. Quinolone, it's a nice group and very interesting group uh, because it's another, uh, in another mechanism of action. The, this molecule is the core and you find this on all the compounds. And if you look the structure of the different uh, quinolone, you see that sarofloxacin Danofloxacin, difloxacin, enrofloxacin is the bitril, ciprofloxacin, nor, and marbofloxacin have more or less the same structure. Except flumequil is quite different. You have not decided change. And it's really a challenge for the analyst to produce an antibody who is able to detect all this compound in the same run and it was a nice challenge during the project Biocop and Confidence, and we were quite lucky to have a generic antibody to detect all the fluorocolinone in the same run. And you have the fluor atom everywhere. Uh, the mechanism of action is totally different. In this case, it's uh, DNA topoisomerase called GIRAS, D is necessary to uh, supercoil the two uh, strands of DNA. So it's due to the inhibition of this enzyme. Uh, it acts again mainly uh, gram negative, uh, and the fluorocolon of the second, third generation are also active again gram positive. The resistance is due to a mutation of the gene encoding for this enzyme. Uh, there is also a lot of, a lot of other antibiotics, other family, like polypeptide, the group of chloramphenicol. Just for the story, chloramphenicol is a forbidden antibiotic since a very long time, but we, are very, we often find some positive results even in Europe. Lincosamine, Lincosen, it's uh, most of the time coupled with spectomycin, and I already spoke about trimetoprim. Agerstein in nature, right, even if drugs are used optimally, there will always be selection for resistance. Over time, the resistance builds up until you have involved the bacterium target to the point that you can use those drugs anymore. And you have to add it that if you have a bad use of your antibiotics, you increase your, your resistance apparently quickly. Uh, in this slide, you see that the mechanism of action and the mechanism of resistance uh, for the antibiotic are more or less the same. The activity of the antibiotics is for some of them on the cell wall. Modification in the possibility for the DNA, production of uh, DNA. Uh, folic acid for sulfonamide and for uh, family like tetracycline, macrolide, aminoglycoside, modification of the uh, ribosome. And the resistance is due to modification of this target. So it's modification of the efflux, the possibility to go inside of all sides of the cell, modification of the production of foli acid folic, uh, DNA, ribosome, and also inactivating enzyme for like beta-lactam with uh, the enzyme we destroyed the penicillin, the uh, beta-lactam ring. 
The epidemiology of antimicrobial can be easily transmitted. You have different way. You have possibility of bacterial transformation. So you have some fragment in the environment of the bacteria we go inside, another bacteria. You have possibility of transduction by the mean of bacteriophage. So you have a bacteriophage of resistance in one cell, they go to another one with some DNA strand. And you have also a possibility of conjugation with two close bacteria. So uh, the genetic uh, information go from one bacteria to directly another one. All this mechanism exists in the case of antimicrobial resistance. Uh, the story of the uh, resistance, it's uh, not new. Uh, for penicillin, it's well now the problem of Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, as explained before, penicillin and other beta-lactam act by binding to PBP, penicillin binding protein, and in 40, all the Staphylococcus aureus were, sen were sensitive to penicillin. In 1942, we had the first case of resistance. In 1949, in hospital, 75% of Staphylococcus aureus were resistant to penicillin. And in 67, 85% of resistance. The strategy was to produce semi-synthetic penicillin and as explained, you have compounds like methicillin, cloxacycline. But we have seen that the bacteria are also able to have resistance against these new uh, antibiotics. And it's what we call MRSA. So it's methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus. And in this case, it was by production of other target or the protein of binding 2' prime of 2A with this protein if a low binding affinity. The strategy was to use vancomycin, but in 97 in Japan there was the first case of positive uh, of uh, bacterial resistance to vancomycin. And we have the same story of resistance for enterococci. So in all case, you, you have a strategy to, uh, to again, this resistance, and you have a new strategy from the bacteria. That's the reason why we have to be very careful with the use of some antibiotics. Uh, in the literature, you have a lot of proof of transfer from, uh, from animals to humans and vice versa. Gentamicin in, in the clinical isolate of Erichia coli by gene of veterinary origin. Uh, Vacomycin fecal is isolated from Danish patient and two healthy human volunteers are possible to isolate from imported Turkic meat. So you see we have a lot of publication. We prove the transfer from animals to human. Yeah, and that one way of transfer is direct contact between the human and the animal and vice versa. And another way of transfer is by, is by food. If you have some chicken or pigs with salmonella, you can have a transfer to food to human. It's a very classical way of transfer. The antibiometrical resistance is first the result of the use of antimicrobial. It depends on the type of antibiotics, the quantity used, and the route of administration. We have more problems with administration by food or by food by feed, sorry, or, or by water. Uh, but there is also non-risk factor like stress, feed, hygiene, and housing. But the main responsible is the use of antibiotics. The antibiotics in veterinary medicine are used as curative. 
So in this case, you have a sick animal and you use this antibiotic directly to, to this animal. You can also have use for metaphylactic. In this case, you have sick animal, but you use also the antibiotics to prevent the disease to non-sick animal. And you have prophylactic. In this case, the animal are not sick, but you use in difficult situation for example, when you put all the animals together after weaning and so on, so it's used before to have some problem. But the problem of antibiotic resistance is mainly used due, due to this use of prophylactic. And the antibiotic can be administered by veterinary. It's mainly in case of curative use by farmer also for metaphylactic and prophylactic, and the feed industry is mainly responsible of the prophylactic uh, uh, use of antibiotics. Sorry. There is different preparation, the most now, the well known by the veterinary, I, the injection, but you have also the possibility to treat the animal before uh, during the lactation of uh, before the dry period, and in some farms it's very often used. They use uh, uh, antibiotics during all the uh, dry period, uh, but the problem is the use of antibiotics by uh, the powder. Uh, in the EMA report, there is a very interesting data regarding the use of antibiotics in Europe, and I will show you some slides uh, coming from this report. Uh, but the first thing that we have to, to do in order to compare the production between the country is to know the quantity of, uh, of uh, meat to, to compare the same thing on, in all country, and they use what they call the PCU, it's the population correct unit. So population correct unit is one kilo meat. So you can compare cow with chicken with pig. And you see that here you, the three main countries are France, Spain, and UK. And you have the production of, the diff, of cattle here in blue, in pigs, poultry. But you see difference between country, and that's one of explanation of the different use of antibiotics. In France, we have a lot of uh, cattle, uh, but in uh, Spain, it's a lower number, but pigs, the number of pigs is higher than in France. Uh, in Belgium, you see that we have more or less the same uh, cattle, pigs. Usually, we say that the number of pigs in Belgium are the same as the number of citizens. That's to say 10,000 pigs in Belgium. <laughs> uh, now, we know the, the PCU, the quantity of animals in different countries. Uh, in this slide, you have, uh, yeah, in this slide, you have the quantity of uh, active ingredient uh, of veterinary antibiotics in food produce in animal, correct by the PCU. So in the last column here, you have the quantity, the milligram, used by PCU, and you see there is very, very big difference. For example, a nice country is Iceland. There is only eight milligram of antibiotic used by PCU, but the bad one is Hungary, 268. It's difficult to understand such a difference uh, because, uh, let's say, when we look at the production of uh, meat in Hungary, we do not understand su such a data. Uh, in, uh, in Ireland, I think that the situation is not so bad, 40. And in, when we compare Belgium and Holland, it's 180. And Netherlands, it's, uh, it's uh, 146, we see it's more or less the, sa the same, but it's mainly due to the production of pigs. Now, the different compounds used uh, in the different countries, the tetracycline are the top one. 
in all countries except maybe in Sweden, in Norway, and in Iceland. But everywhere you see in blue here that the tetracycline is very, very often used and in huge quantity. In Hungary, you see the quantity used, it's more than 150 uh, uh, milligrams per kilo. After we have the penicillin and the sulfonamide, penicillin and the sulfonamide, and the other in not so important than the T, this three compound. We have to focus on this uh, group. Another uh, table, very interesting, is to, uh, you have to observe that most of the production of the sale of antibiotics is on premix and in powder. More than 90% of the antibiotics sold in Europe are on this form. And if you look, injection is 9%, uh, oral pasta 0.1, and for the, the mastitis is uh, one person. So it's quite low regarding the uh, premix and the oral uh, administration. Uh, still for the same reason, because it's used for prophylactic, uh, for, uh, prophylactic use. In the last uh, uh, four or three slides, I have taken the recommendation of the CVMP regarding the use of uh, antimicrobial. The first one is to try to improve, to increase the level of innovation on treatment alternative. There is a lot of possibility, for example, for uh, coccidiostat or parasitic disease now, there is more and more research for vaccine. Okay, there is still a lot of problem, it's not yet used regulatory, but uh, there is some new uh, approach. Uh, uh, why, for viral disease, there is also a lot of vaccine to protect the animals. There is possibility to use compounds like lactoferrin, lactoperisoidase, and other uh, natural compounds. The, the second thing, that we have to, uh, to try to do is to, in, to a new innovation in the diagnostic tools. Now, when a vet is inter would like to have a diagnosis of uh, disease, he has to take sample of uh, fishes, of uh, liver, I don't know, from an animal to send to the lab. He wait two or three days before to have a, a result of Salmonella uh, or, or whatever, and he have still one day before to have the result of one antibiogram. So it takes more or less one week before to have a result. Uh, we have to ask to the industry to have a clear information on the uh, uh, spec, is a summary product characteristic. So the pharmaceutical industry must give all the information regarding this product and it must be clear regarding the problem of uh, antibiotic resistance. S some compound like cephalosporin of second and third generation or uh, uh, quinolone, fluoroquinolone, we have to reserve for a second line antibiotics, not to use in the first line, but in second line, when you have poor result with other antibiotic, otherwise you increase the antimicrobial appearance. Uh, chemical trial should be conducted uh, with responsible use principle. For the moment, uh, uh, the industry, when they, will, they are interested to prove the activity of one antibiotic, they make a clinical trial with a specific disease, again, a specific uh, uh, bacteria. But in most cases, you have a multi-infection. Uh, you already have some, uh, some uh, resistance. So you must, you, you, must, you must be careful and because the objective of the industry is to say, okay, this antibiotic is active again, E. coli of salmonella and so on, and that's it. But in most cases on the field, it's more complex than one disease and one uh, bacteria. 
Uh, interesting to have some guideline because uh, most of the veterinary and farmer are not uh, very well informed about that. And there is also the problem of, of label use. As you know, uh, the veterinary are allowed to use the cascade system. They are allowed to, to use some antibiotics of label, mainly for minor species. But in this case, you have not indication of the dosage the duration of the treatment and also the residues, the problem of residues, but it's also the same problem for the, uh, for the antimicrobial resistance. So we have to limit that, uh, the use of label. Uh, CVMP and uh, other European uh, organisms like EMA and uh, local authorities have to work together because it's not a local problem, it's a problem everywhere. So we have it's interest to share the information. Uh, we have to, to be uh, very, uh, to insist on the animal management and husbandry because we cannot solve problem of animal husbandry of a very bad farmer by using antibiotics. We have first to try to improve the animal management. Education of veterinary and farmer regarding the problem of the responsible use of antibiotics, because until now, most of the information for the veterinary is okay, uh, you have this bacteria, you have to use these antibiotics, it's active in this case and that's it, but we forget this problem. Uh, we have now more and more generic antibiotics on the market and the, uh, the result of uh, that is that the price is decreased and so the farmer is prefer in some case to use antibiotic, cheap antibiotic because it's cheap, it's easy to use, than to do something else. So it's not uh, a very good thing to have cheap antibiotics because you, you, the, the people are, have tendency to use more and more because it's cheap. Uh, monitoring is of the data, okay, of sale and consumption, and also it's uh, to identify the area where they need an action. The, the, vigilance, the vigilance regarding the antibiotics, the use of antibiotics and the apparition of uh, uh, antimicrobial resistance is also very important. It's very important to give a feedback to the authorities if you have some problem with some antibiotics. Uh, in Belgium, but I suppose it's the same in uh, other European countries, since uh, uh, 12, we have an initiative of uh, Jerome de Hulf of uh, University of Ghent Veterinary Faculties. The, we have a group called AMCRA, Antibiotic Consumption Resistance in Animals, and it was uh, created by the sector with collaboration of the Food Agency and the Federal Agency for Medicine and Health Product. The objective is responsible use of antibiotics, so they have a lot of contact with the veterinary, with the industry, with the feed producer, and so on. And the object, the target, is the farmer and the veterinary. If you are interested, some of you do not hesitate to take contact with Jerome de Wolf at the Ghent University. He's very active in this field, uh, very interesting. So, uh, I would like to thank Jeroen de Wulf and Pascal Richet for their help uh, and you for your kind attention and sorry for my poor English and my French accent. <laughs>